it's like this many who are doing exercises and then they are going for regular walks. Seasons, right? And then never to forget that in the Christian, um, I can say in the Father's kingdom, not Christian, because I don't want to use that word anymore. Um, in the Father's kingdom, when the Father starts to um, download the things what the world has to receive, it can be varied and it need not be similar. Things which I learned when I was a young uh, kid or a college goer or a young mother is no longer significant anymore. Christ went to the cross, Christ died on the cross, Christ was buried, Christ rose from the dead, Christ is the redeemer, Christ bought us out of the hand of the enemy, we are free from hell, and uh, all that are foundations which cannot be shaken. Your name's written in the book of life, and then walking in the holiness and sanctification, the truth, you know, giving, you know, I said giving, giving, it started, you know, it started when the father started to give. So giving and then to uh, honoring, all of them cannot be changed at all. They are on those foundation we stand and looking at, this is my assumption, looking at our ability to receive, Father starts to open up revelation over our lives, depending on the ability to receive. So you open your, open your heart so wide and then asking the Lord, what is that that you want to release on this world right now? When your heart is so open, he starts to reveal things which had not been revealed so far. Because the Bible says it is step by step, glory to glory, faith to faith. And it says precepts upon precept, layer over the layer over the layer. And so you, people of God, have come to a place where you can consume what is downloaded on you. Amen. That is what I feel. That's what God wants to uh, tell us. It may not be like a place where we used to be before. It will not be that. It will be like eagles gathering. Yeah, it will be like eagles gather. Eagles gather over great prey, you see. <coughs> eagles are not going behind the worms. They go over and eagle go and, you know, land in such places. So, so keep that in mind when you get teachings. You know, it can be a sort of an overload over you but you are fit enough to receive. Amen. 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 And you so these songs had come maybe three, four, five years back and we had been singing them. And then once again, when you take them, even them becomes little older comparing to what you are learning. Yeah. 
And so they ascend, I ascend, I ascend. That word was so fresh those days. Now you know, as you close your eyes and step through the well, you ascend. Did you notice that? That is how your pastor goes behind uh, the songs which are new, which is from the he heavens, heavenly realm. Not, you know, something which you all used to be before. Why? Because you um, move in, into that realm as you um, make those words or the statement your confession through songs. Amen. And that's how it is. So today I'm going to teach you uh, something related to what God had given us for this year. And so this promise, I very much believe that it is from the heart of God. And many uh, prophetic people and many saints of God are going all around through uh, all around this in a different manner. I watched, or I saw one or two. So the scripture from Psalm 52, eight to nine speaks like this, but I am like a flourishing olive tree. I am like a flourishing olive tree. So I am not diminishing, I'm growing. I am flourishing. So the history or the, or the narration or the uh, description about uh, the olive tree and etc. I've collected and I've kept today. I'm not going to talk about maybe in future. But uh, the olive tree can um, live for thousands of years. They live for thousands of years. And then even after cutting, the, 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 the bark of it, the, the bark of it, it again starts to, uh, you know, flourish. And so thousands of years, you know, the olive trees can survive. So it's just a historical value. So we will learn, I mean, we will enjoy knowing about it later on. Um, but I am like, but I am, so you need to read the previous scriptures to know but why the but came. I, 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 am, I am like a flourishing olive tree anointed in the house of God. So house of God is not in going to Jerusalem or Israel anymore. You are the house of God. You are flourishing from within. You know, I know when I talk to you, right, uh, come here, sit down and talk to you. If I'm not flourishing within, it's very hard for me to uh, tell you we are flourishing. So there are times that I do miss flourishing within and it becomes a struggle to come to that place. So I understand what you go through. And so we develop the flourishing within in the house of God. So the flourishing without comes all around you as you are capable of releasing that blessings and flourishing to someone else and so when the sons of God when they gather you know you have a capacity to release what you have over others that's why when we stand together in unity, when singing or in confessing, there's something happens and takes place when you are, uh, you know, literally face to face with others and then, you know, releasing that kind of a thing, you know, heavenly thing to others. So I trust in the unending love of God. I'm going to talk about that today. I trust in the unending love of God. You know, seasons may change. Circumstances may change, Pe people may change, and even your own physical body may change, but you can trust in the unfailing love of God. Write it in your heart. We are going to put a great foundation on that trusting because God insists that over us this year. So uh, we have been learning about it when I describe that. Uh, with the help of the uh, screen, you will know, we had uh, know it, 
we had known it already, but then we are going to look at it all again and again. The goodness of the Lord forever and ever. Another, another uh, version says, endures continually. So, the mighty men, actually, this is the, this is the other way to put the eight to nine scripture. The mighty men is plucked up by the root, but I am like a green olive tree. Planted and rooted, fixed and flourishing. Yeah, that's how it says. So he's turned out of God's dwelling. That means when you are abiding and dwelling in God's place, you know, like how the Psalm 25 I read, you know, near to him as lovers of God. Yeah. That there is possibility of receiving new revelation to know God more better. It's not to change your situation alone, but to know God better as a lover of God, irrespective of the situations. Yeah, I'm teaching myself today. Okay. Um, so there are, you know, things that we can understand from how and what we must do to be a green olive tree. So we, have, we must live a life of faith and holy confidence in God. So today, God is drawing us into a new type of trust, a new type of faith. Yeah? I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. We must live a, a life of thankfulness and a uh, holy joy. Come on, just like that, even if you don't feel that any holy joy is around you right now, you just keep saying it as the, uh, uh, as the you know, living letters are taught us the, for this year. Just keep confessing. We must live in, a, I must live in a life of thankfulness and a holy joy in God. So joy is not from the world. It's from him. I will praise you forever because you have done it. The rest of the scripture is that. You have done it. So you have a problem, you have a crisis, you have a situation which is so confusing. Yeah? Have you gone through such sta stages? It's so confusing. Wherever you touch, it is not fixing. Yeah? Certain times the situations are like that. Through it all, what you will say, I will praise the Lord forever because you have done it. So this is not an unending problem. Come on, speak over yourself. This is not an unending problem. Yeah, because he has done it. And already he has finished it. Yeah, performed it according to his promises. According to his promises. That drives us to... Go to the scriptures and the words, the Bible, more this year. Because without the key, we can't open the door. Yeah? So confidence in God. So I'm going to put scriptures before you for that. Hopefully, we will try to finish this uh, very quickly. Yeah? Joshua chapter 1-9. Because, you know, all these days, the group that used to come next to us, were not coming because they were minding their business or Christmas season, but now hereafter they will come rushing. That's why we have to rush and finish everything on time. Okay, Joshua chapter one, verse nine. It says, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous, do not be terrified or dismayed or intimidated. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Come on, catch hold of that word for you. Because we are learning about trusting God. Trust the, 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 the like I can say, the, a person, like a person. You trust, uh, you, you learn about the trust. So he says, be strong and courageous. So that means when you don't feel like you are good enough, it, it's easy to want to say, like, my God, I just don't like it. And then you start to hide in the back and avoid bringing any attention to yourself. 
and you even say, I don't want to see anybody. I can be at home. I don't want to come to the meetings anymore. I don't want to be in the prayers anymore. You know, you start to avoid because you feel that you are not good enough. Yeah? But God commands you to be strong and courageous. Amen. The only way to uh, way out of that such type of feelings or depressive mood is to keep telling yourself, Lata, be strong and courageous. Amen. There is nothing else. You just speak those blessings over you. Not in your own abilities. You may not be able to do it in your own abilities or your own strength, but because God will be with you wherever you go. Yeah? God will be with you. Come on, speak that over you. God will be with me wherever I go. It's a best or a good or an ugly situation or a poor situation or a deprived situation or a, you know, what? So ever sad situation, God will be with you wherever you go. You can live in confidence because of his strength. Say amen. amen. And next scripture that I want to show you is Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7. It says this, blessed with spiritual security is the man. Blessed is a man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord and whose hope in confident expectation, catch hold of those words, is the Lord. So you don't have anything else but to have confident expectation. So expectation is the main word. At this moment, you don't know what will be, what will be tomorrow or during that season or whatsoever. And you have a confident expectation about the result that will follow. Amen. So you have it, you build it, and you keep it, and you know, you become immovable about it. Amen. And then it happens. Amen. And so strength comes from heaven because you keep on keeping on with him. You are not, you are not, you know, uh, uh, like in oscillation. You are strong and focused, come on. Just I'm bringing you, you know, from everything that is binding you to the, you know, earth. So it is not going to be that way. You are going to ascend means what? You take off from any ugliness that is trying to pull you down so that you will not enjoy what God has got for you. God has got for you good things only. Come on. Out of every bad situation, God has got a good plan for you. And he will give it to you. Keep expecting. Yeah, tell to yourself. Keep expecting. Keep expecting. But this looks very bad. But keep expecting. This is so uncertain. But keep expecting. Keep expecting. Keep expecting. For he will be nourished like a tree. Look at that. There is a connection when you start to trust and to keep expecting. You become a tree. You become like a tree, that, a tree planted by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear the heat when it comes, but its leaves will be green and moist and it will not be anxious. You got it? And concerned in a year of drought or stop bearing fruit. That means goodness flowing out of you is fruit. Joy is fruit. So ask that question, Latha, do you have joy this morning? Did you have joy when you entered into the church? No. <laughs> you see, and so you face it, yeah. No, there was no such type of a joy or something like that. But he says it will not be anxious and concerned in that situation, in the year of drought. Come on, change your change your thinking and change your energy. Okay. And so he's telling you will be like a nourishing tree, a fruit bearing tree. This situation is not yours. You will be like a fruitful tree. Your life will be a blessed thing. And so you are changing now because um, um, if you have that con confidence and expectation, you will be planted by the reverse. 
the the water is this Amen. and the water is the holy spirit Amen. and i think few lines came in the song relating to that yeah holy spirit come then i was laughing i was uh, you know even laughing with the norbert hai that's so old thing man don't call holy spirit down <laughs> you know you go where he is what what not we've learned so many uh, things but the rivers of living waters will flow out of you Amen. it can't be changed right so the holy spirit river if you are attached the rivers will flow all around you and that will make you flourish Amen. so stay there rest in rest in a rest assured the things around you things before you are not going to steal away what god has got within you Amen. you are a fruit bearing tree and you had been blessed before and your hands were opened before the same hands will be opened even in future Amen. you were a giver before and you don't fear the drought in the future Amen. this god who helped you to be a giver will make you a giver again Amen. and you know the blessings will go out of you everywhere and your smile is enough to bless somebody tomorrow Amen. come on come out of all those you know not good feelings <laughs> and you know he is with you he is for you an expectation so on what you are going to do it because i have to save my time for a good uh, good stuff that is coming so i'm rushing so what what god has given you is this the assurance after assurance after assurance this, that's why he says he loves his love endures forever it's not like a man's love it's not like a woman's love his love endures forever non stop and it will be yeah yeah say amen and so as we stay in that we step into it and live in him he doesn't have any concern he doesn't have any anxiety he knows everything past present future of you so let's go with him amen so trust him psalm 273 though an army encamp against me my heart will not fear though war rise against me even in this i am confident war rise up against me i'm confident come on shift Amen. your shift your position right now Amen. when war rose up against you you were not confident you were shaky but now you declare i will be confident i will be confident this war this war and this war and this war many wars but i will be confident even your physical body is struggling against you you will be confident you will not be afraid passion says yeah you will not be shaken passion says so you will not be shaken what is written in the scripture will happen over your life psalm 113 13 and 14 word says for you formed my innermost parts you knit me in my mother's womb i will give thanks and praise to you for i am fearfully wonderfully made wonderful are your works and my soul knows it very well you know if there is one source that you can rest on you can connect with when everything else is shaky yes god Amen. is yahweh Amen. is yeshua everything is shaking but you can connect with them because he's not going to shake he is permanent he is permanent and he says my soul knows it very well so give a teaching to your soul talk to your soul give a teaching to your soul hey soul you bring all the confusion you know that even in your mind things happen this way that neurological pathway which had been recording stuff in the past is not letting go of stuff which were negative and you need to let that neurological pathway which had printed and 
you know, uh, 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 recorded stuff in your uh, mind negatively to go. That's why you ask for the soul realm to be completely cleansed day after day. And you say my conscious mind, subconscious mind, unconscious mind, you know, you are full of the uh, fire of Jesus. Jesus is filling you with fire. No other uh, 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 de demonic stuff or no other angel can guard my gate. Jesus is guarding my gate. It's a soul gate. So all those neurologic, see, this will happen and this will happen and this will happen and this will happen. It's, a, you know, framed in the memory. The neurological pathway is always, oh, you do this, oh, it will end up in this and in this because it is recorded over there. So time to undo the recording. Amen. Amen. So how you will undo? You will undo in his presence by the power of God, the Holy Spirit, the river will flow, the fire of Yeshua will come and cleanse. Come on, catch hold of it. So you become a new uh, being to receive something new to have that recorded in the neurological pathway. Hallelujah. They say for a habit to be formed, it takes 21 days. Yeah, and so like people like uh, Ian, they go for three into 21 days to do something uh, to undo or to, you know, do it positively. So that means anything can be trained. Yeah, every negative things can be undone. Every wrong expectation which is sitting there can be undone. Every failure expectation can be undone. Come on, say amen or no. Because God wants you to flourish this year. And so we are taking time and we are looking into the scripture. And we say, yeah, I have this, this, this problem. The one thing that I like is, you know, <laughs> our heart is so softened and humble to say, yes, I have that problem. I like it in my life, in myself. I will immediately say, yes, I have that problem. I think that's in my blood. I don't want to come all around to say, maybe, maybe. No, 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 no. I will say, Jesus, I have this problem. Keep coming, keep on coming, and I'm not overcoming it. I need an overcoming hand. I may have a thousand things even now. But I know how to handle it. Not saying, maybe this and maybe. I hate that. Just go to that point and say, wrong is wrong. I mean, before God, where you're going to go and say? The same way you will say to people also, wrong is wrong. Yeah. Because you are humble. Why? The ultimatum, the goal is to receive the best from him. Yeah, live a free life, a supernatural life. Yeah, are you getting this? So you have to flourish this year, say amen. amen. You have to be a fruit bearing tree. Okay, okay. Okay, let me go to this, what I have to teach you today. I hope that I have few things, pictures, which you have seen before, but I'm going to bring it new today. Trust. The Hebrew word for trust is batach, okay? B-A-T-A-C-H, batach, okay? And so, this batach is um, made up of three living letters, that is bayit, tet, and chet. So the batach means trust, confidence to be secure. So how this concordance and stuff, what they say is like this. We break down the word batach into bait. Can I have that picture of the house? So bait is a 
Beit is a house. So Beit is a house. I chose a house which is really nice. I didn't want to have a house which is, you know, yeah, it's like a dream house, yeah? And so your mother, father, can you imagine all that? And then fighting siblings, <laughs> you know, once upon a time, long, long ago. And then, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Whatever imagination, what you want to do. Okay, so bait is a house. So we are talking about trust, isn't it? So what do you expect uh, that is inside of the house? Well, how we will describe that house? Come on, you know it. How will you describe that house? You look at it and you want to describe it. What's inside of the house? Who is inside of the house? Do you have the key to the door? Yes or no? Yes. You, uh, so talk about the house now. It's a place of protection. It's a place of security. It's a place of love. It's a place of joy. Imagine each room with a different beautiful uh, 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 wall color, painting, you know? different types of uh, 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 you know, decoration, whatsoever. You can, you can just uh, imagine that. You know, beautiful uh, spiral uh, staircase going upstairs, yeah? Three, four rooms upstairs, three rooms downstairs. Come on, go. Look at it. There is a great fridge downstairs, upstairs, everywhere. And food is there. And a beautiful kitchen. So what, what do you want to say now? Batach, that is a trust. Yeah? Do you have a trust like how, you know, this living in this home will give you? You can go open the fridge anytime you want. You don't have to ask permission to somebody. You don't, you can go to the kitchen anytime you want. Yeah, you can sleep on any bed. Ah, that cannot be, because some people don't allow others to sleep on their bed. And so that's good, I like it. And so, you know, you have your room to go and sleep on. Yeah? And then you have children running around and playing everywhere. The smell of good food. Your visitors, you know, taboo these days, yeah? Visitors means don't follow that culture. The visitors, they come, you give them coffee and you give them this and that and, you know, like, you know, beautifully telling like Abraham t told, please stand here and wait, I will go bring you food. Ancient culture doesn't say you came without calling and so, come on, I'm just breaking all, yeah, right. So what our children are going to learn? Which culture? Think about that. And so everything like about, this, trust speaks about the house, yeah? And then number two, it speaks about, huh, what is that word? Tet, tet is to, um, surround, yeah? Can I have the, no? It is, a tet is a basket. Can I have that, yeah. So it looks like a basket and you may wonder what it is. You know, it is to surround or to go around. To surround, so I think sometime back I was showing another picture about this wrapped around, isn't it? a baby's picture, you remember? So that means the safety of it. Baby gets so comfortable, a small infant gets comfortable. When you wrap the baby, yeah, and to hold the baby, that soothes the baby and feels so good. That is what trust does for you. It's a tent, it's a basket, it is surrounding you. The third picture is het. The head that is from Batak, I'm describing. The, the third picture is a 
Come on. Fence. So what do you what do you think about the fence now? What do you think about the fence? Fence is what? Protection. Protecting you from wild animals and protecting you from any snake or creepers or robbers and uh, protecting you from wind and storm and you know all those so that means this word batah has that type of property in it when you trust and have confidence in him you are like being in a house there is a house a bait which is surrounded and fenced and well protected. You are surrounded by God. As you trust, you are sur surrounded. How do you know? The trust, the batah, you know, used to be inside the surrounding wall or fence. So today you know that you are not outside, you are inside the surrounding wall and fence. You and your family, you and yours, near and far. Your kith and kin, your siblings, your parents, your you know, uh, children, grandchildren. You know. The Bible says, um, he is my refuge and my fortress. So these pictures, you, know, you can remember these pictures and that you trust in Elohim because he is your fence, he is your fortress, he is your bait, he is your house, he is the surrounding wall around you. Yeah? So you know that in ancient times that many uh, you know, nations have the habit of building uh, walls around them, even till today, Israel is doing because they had been doing before, from before. And so these looks, they look at the wall as uh, for safety and confidence that they live within. So he says that, David says, that is not the wall I'm keeping my confidence on. I am keeping my confidence on Elohim. He is my fortress, he is my safety, and he is my protection. And Elohim is surrounding me as a wall of safety. So you're learning about uh, 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 trust today. Because I trust in the unending love of God, I flourish. So you go touch the real story over there, so unending. So what, where do you see this batah in the Old Testament in the beginning? It is in Exodus chapter 12. What about that? What, what, where is the wall? No, it was not a wall. Think about this. Chapter 12, 7 to 13 says about how the people of Israel were asked to kill a lamb, a Passover lamb, and take the drops of the blood and place it on the lintels of their houses and they need to eat them the with the unleavened bread. You remember that? So in that way, in that place, batah is used. That means the blood of Jesus Christ became their protection. So even today the same, yeah? So the trust, the trust, that became the fence around them. So enemies, couldn't touch them. The spirit of death could not enter in. The angel of death could not kill them. Like, like you know, it happened to the other people there. So that keep them safe inside your homes. Means that home. The angel of death could not touch them. So trust, batah, is faith in Elohim. And uh, this trust becomes a wall that surrounds you from every disaster. So Isaiah says, Behold, El Elohim is my salvation. Salvation is Yeshua. S salvation is Yeshua. I will trust Batah and not be afraid. For Yehovah, Elohim, 
is my strength and song. He has become my Yeshua. Amen. Look at that. He has become my Yeshua. He has become my salvation. Yeah? And uh, uh, David says he is my fortress and my refuge. That is Elohim in whom I trust. Hallelujah. So this trust is a beautiful uh, scripture. I'm going to show you a, um, a description from the, um, from the Old Testament. Turn with me to uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 32. Better read the Bible this year more than any other time. So 2 Chronicles chapter 32. So what is the subject that we are learning about today? It's about trust. All right? Okay. I've skipped many scriptures in order to come so that I will concentrate on these um, in, this, in this chapter. Okay. Shall we go from here? You can read with me because it's a chapter. You're going to read something very new and interesting. After these things and this loyalty, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came, invaded Judah, and encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to take them. When Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and intended to fight against Jerusalem, he decided with his officers and his mighty men to stop up the waters of the fountains which were outside the city by enclosing them with masonry and concealing them and they helped him. So many people gathered and they stopped up all the springs and the brook which flowed through the land saying, why should the king of Assyria come and find much water? Also Hezekiah took courage and built up all the wall that was broken and raised towers upon it. And he built another wall outside and strengthened the Milo in the city of David and made weapons and shields in abundance. And he set captains of war over the people and gathered them together to him in the street of gate of the city and spoke encouragingly to them saying, come on, read, be strong and courageous. Be not afraid or dismayed before the king of Assyria and all the horde that is with him. For there is another with us. Come on. Come on. There is another. With him is an arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us to fight our battles. And the people relied the words of Hezekiah king of Judah. And this Sennacherib, king of Assyria, while he himself with all his forces was before Lachish, sent his servants to Jerusalem to Hezekiah, king of Judah, and to all Judah who were at Jerusalem, saying, thus says, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, on what do you trust? You know, the reason why you're reading is you will know the difference. On what do you trust? That you remain in strongholds in Jerusalem. Is not Hezekiah leading you on in order to let you die by famine or thirst, saying, the Lord our God will deliver us out of the hand of the king of Assyria? He has not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places and his altars and commanded Judah and Jerusalem, you shall worship before one altar and burn incense upon it. Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of other lands with the guards of the nations of those lands in any way able to deliver their lands out of my hand? Who among all the guard of those nations that my fathers utterly destroyed was able to deliver his people out of my hand and that your God should be able to deliver you out of my own? So now do not let Ezekiah deceive or mislead you in this way and do not believe him. For no God of any nation or kingdom was able to deliver his people out of my hand or the hand of the fathers. How much less will your God deliver you out of my hand? 
And his servant said still more against the Lord God, against his servant Hezekiah. The Assyrian king also wrote letters insulting the Lord, the God of Israel, and speaking against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of my hand, so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of my hand. And, the, and they shouted it loudly in the Jewish language to the people of Jerusalem who were on the wall to frighten and to terrify them that they might take the city. And they spoke of the God of Jerusalem as they spoke of the gods of the peoples of the earth, which are the work of the hands of men. For this cause, Hezekiah the king and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, prayed and cried to heaven. And the Lord sent an angel who cut off all the mighty warriors and commanders and officers in the camp of the king of Assyria. So the Assyrian king returned with shamed face to his own land. And when he came into the house of his God, they who were his own offspring slew him there with the soul. The land, Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, and from the hand of all his enemies, and he guided them on every side. And many brought gifts to Jerusalem to the Lord and presents to Hezekiah, king of Judah. So from then on, he was magnified in the sight of all nations. Amen. So you understand the whole thing right now. No need to explain at all. Amen. So in your situation, the enemy or the sickness or the lack or the poverty or whatsoever is terrifying you saying, which God of yours is going to redeem you? So the answer is God of heaven is releasing angels. Yeah? He is releasing angels to come and massacre the enemy. So be strong and courageous. Be not afraid or dismayed. With him, for there is another with us greater than the arm of flesh is with him, but with us greater than all those with him. Amen. 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 And so God is encouraging each people saying, when you start to trust in God, even when others or the situation is trying to abuse the name of Yahweh in your life, you are going to win. Amen. Nothing impossible Amen. with God. Amen. The folly of relying upon any other type of security is str strongly contrasted with depending upon God alone. Amen. At this moment, take a chance and talk to God saying, I am trusting you on you. I will put my trust in you and you alone. My confidence is upon you. You are my refuge and my strong tower. I am not going to trust on a man or a woman or situation or my job, you know, or my degree or my fame or my name or my family or my background. I'm trusting on you. You will do it again. Say amen. amen. Say amen. He's amen. with you and he's for you. He's not against you. And you and your household will be well. Amen. Nothing is impossible. Come on, speak that over you. Your children will be well. Amen. Nothing is impossible. You are changing and turning everything around at this moment in the heavenly realm as you confess your heart and your thought 
going towards it with one focus, like how I was telling the other day, your heart and your thought, there's no variedness. Your heart and your thought in one focus, yeah, you're depending on him. He is your batah. He is your trust. He is your fortress. He is your fence. He is your house. He is, his, he is your home. He is your security. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you for beautifully, wonderfully, fearfully creating us and giving us great security and refuge, O oh God. Lord God, we trust on you. And we declare that we trust in the Lord and do good. You will never despise us as we trust in you. And we will dwell in the land and feed on your faithfulness, O oh God. And we decide to trust and delight ourselves in you. And you will give the desires and petitions of our heart. As uh, uh, in the beginning of this year, O oh God, we stand before you and we make a covenant promise with you that we are going to trust in you and commit our way to you. Amen. And nothing is impossible with you, God, as we trust in you. You will become our righteousness at the at the other side of the veil, we choose to enter as we ascend. In Jesus Christ's mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 May the love of our Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>